Thank you for coming here. Uh, my presentation is on uh, common property force management and uh, its, uh, its implication for, for rate. That's a case study from Ethiopia, prepared by, by myself, uh, uh, Randa Brofstone from Portland State University and Alamo from uh, uh, Madison University. Uh, my presentation outline is uh, uh, as follows, introduction, uh, some, some, some literature on force management, trade and livelihoods, um, methodology on the data and uh, empirical strategy issues, uh, and discussion and finally uh, the conclusion. To give you uh, some, some background on, uh, on, on, on climate change, uh, uh, as you know, this is perhaps the most environmental problem facing humanity today. And uh, around 70 to 20% of uh, these global greenhouse gas emissions uh, can be uh, really attri attributed to deforestation and forest degradation. Uh, and this is due to, uh, again, uh, the problem of, you know, uh, this deforestation for various purposes, forest degradation for, for various purposes, burning of biomass for cooking and heating. And these are the key contributors to climate change. But we know that foresters play a number of roles, like adaptation to climate change, especially in the case of water management, conserve uh, 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 carbon or help in reducing, you know, this global, uh, global warming. Coming to the case of Africa or Ethiopia, we know that most of the rural population depend on a variety of these forest resources, uh, uh, timber and non-timber forest products. And the challenge is how to reduce this uh, problem of deforestation and forest degradation uh, uh, in order to use foresters for you know, adaptation or mitigating climate change without really compromising the livelihood of the people. Well, uh, and there are so many factors uh, indicated as a cause for deforestation or forest degradation in, in Ethiopia. For example, a poorly defined property right is one of the main causes. And to give you a background on the forest status of our country, some 4.6% of uh, the forest cover and 0.8% uh, or something like 140 to 160 or 180, depending on the source, hectares of forest are deforested each year. So uh, recognizing this problem, now, a forest proclamation was issued in 2007 and uh, 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 the forest policy was also approved in the same year. And both documents allow a variety of national arrangements uh, uh, for investment in forests like CPF and private or loss and on farm trees uh, like that. But it's, it's known that a more promising national arrangement is uh, common property uh, because uh, various literature showed that it is efficient in terms of you know, di direct household level benefits. And it's because better management generally uh, increase the forest value, both you know, uh, the uh, timber and non-timber forest products. But such a vision of common property for forest management is insufficient given you know, the importance of this better management for climate change. Uh, for example, some, some studies uh, show that adoption of this uh, common, common community forest management are important for red. But uh, there is still little understanding between CPFM and uh, climate change by various, various stakeholders. So what's, what's the objective is just to add to the limited literature, which are not really rigorous, uh, uh, like the one by Chatter and Agrawal 2009, which is published in PINAS is one, by just examining the link between CPFM and carbon stock in the study area. Again, just to give you background on the link between this forest management trade and livelihoods. The increased focus on the relation between this forest governments and red has uh, highlighted really the importance of uh, commonly owned and managed forests. And the concern is that there are, there are concerns that red plus will you know, centralize uh, forest control and harm the very poor, poor people who are really dependent on the forests. Uh, that's because it's, it's, it's unlikely that the carbon revenue obtained from that will be able to replace this incentive, or the social gains from community forests is uh, by far greater than the potential revenue from, from the carbon, as, as some say. But on the other hand, some, some scholars argue that community forests can give multiple outcomes. The multiple outcomes in the form of like uh, benefits to the householders, biodiversity conservation in terms of, in terms of carbon, carbon storage. And the literature also showed that effective CPM, CPFM uh, would, would, would be forced to restrict their collection. There are a number of, uh, number of literatures uh, on this one. 
Uh, it has also shows that it, it has a positive impact in reducing deforestation and conserving foresters. Uh, that implies clearly defined uh, and enforced property rights uh, uh, to forest land and resources is, 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 is considered to be a precondition for you know, effective implementation of red programs. And Agrawal and uh, 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 Angarshan in 2009 have also discussed in detail you know, the role of local level initiatives in, in, in red. Uh, when you say this local level initiatives, it refers to you know, the norms, you know, the cultures, the attitudes, and so on. Uh, and this, for instance, clear boundaries of forest search, local autonomy in designing clear and enforceable rules for access and use of forests, things like monitoring and sanctioning rules, a lot of, a lot of uh, initial indicators are, are very important for the su successful uh, implementation of uh, Red Plus. And there are also other related studies on this. Uh, some studies also show the importance of creating awareness uh, for, for Red Plus initiative to be successful, uh, a case study from, from, from Tanzania. And, uh, some found that uh, uh, this red plus is less successful because the local community uh, in the eastern section of Madagascar, for instance, are, are still un unaware of this, this, this red issues. So the empirical evidence on the link between this carbon stock and socioeconomic characteristics are also very limited. Uh, uh, I think uh, Jemmy from maybe Tanzania, uh, uh, amount of carbon sequestered by trees on farms is also dependent on you know, household characteristics. Things like uh, you know education, sex of the household, and, and so on. And some socioeconomically uh, disadvantaged individuals are the most dependent on, on, on the forest, and some 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 afraid that you know uh, it may affect uh, the livelihood of these people because of the introduction of these restrictive measures. So in order to reduce this deforestation for forest degradation, the other thing is in addition to the micro level, the macro level should be uh, under, 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 I mean, should, should be stressed. I mean, like the underlined, we call them the underlined causes. These are, you know, the population, for example, and poverty and land use uh, rights and, and, and others uh, should be considered. So, though recently the issue of trade has attracted, you know, academicians, and there is a, uh, a still a growing empirical literature on that, to our knowledge, the available evidences are, uh, are, are, are mainly descriptive and largely qualitative, qualitative in nature. So, our aim is just to add to the limited literature on, on red and uh, uh, forest management. So, what, what has, what, what's the methodology done? We have uh, data, uh, data, uh, uh, collected uh, uh, for the project entitled Household Forest Values Under Varying Management Regions in Ethiopia. So the purpose was to look at, you know, the forest values under different types of property right regions. So we tried to use that uh, data for this purpose, even though it has some, some, some limitations. So the sample sites were selected based on sites selected for the Sustainable Land Management Program. Uh, run by the World League Bank and I think GIZ also. Uh, and we, we, after purposely selecting the size, we use a simple random sampling technique to, use, to, to select the households to be interviewed. So originally 600 households, but for, for our purpose, we selected only some 315 households where there is this uh, uh, data of ownership that are collected. And both household level and community level were were, were, were collected, and we have different information on that, like forest cover, biomass availability, density, agroecology, household characteristics, and so on. Another important thing in this, in this, uh, in this exercise was the estimation of carbon stock, which was uh, estimated by one of the team members, a forester, and uh, there are different estimations for uh, tropic, developed for tropical countries, the brown Italy, brown 1997, Pearson 2005, which I'm not familiar with because that is uh, estimated by one of the foresters. And uh, he used uh, one of these, which, considered or which, which is considered to be the best for uh, giving you know, carbon estimation or carbon stock as it considers you know, the diameter uh, the height of the trees and diameter at breast height. So, uh, so th though he gave us, you know, three different estimation based on the three uh, techniques, uh, we choose one which, according to him, is based in uh, 
giving you know uh, uh, the real estimates or closer to that. This is the carbon stock, which uh, I mean showing the variation among the study size. Kabele is uh, you know the lowest administ administrative unit in Ethiopia. And also the carbon stocks per hectare is different from uh, side to side, ranging from 0 0.028 to 119 tons per hectare. Uh, the empirical strategy is we, we just use a simple oil less uh, carbon stock here per capita versus you know, CPFM, uh, uh, other exogenous community level variables and uh, agroecological zones. And uh, finally, we have the disarmament term. So the CPFM index is based on perception of households. And in order to get that index, we use a factor analysis. And we got one factor with eigenvalue greater than one. And the limitation of this is there are some variables which, which wanted to be included in the analysis, but because of lack of data, we were not able to include those, like grazing density, uh, the presence of NGOs for forest development, and so on. So we use a simple oil estimated to, for forest for estimation. We, we have different specifications, like per capita or per hectare, uh, versus uh, uh, initial and other uh, conditioning variables. Uh, the results show that the local level issues has a positive and significant effect on the level of carbon stock. And this is basically, you know, th there are a list of uh, uh, questions, and uh, it's from that we get, you know, this, this, this indicator. It's, I, I can say that it refers to monitoring enforcement. Some of them refers to the allocation. Some of them refers to, you know, the fairness in the distribution of products and the awareness uh, among the members of uh, uh, the community. So we can say that enforcing a system of rules and regulation may have a positive implication for forest conditions. Then increasing the awareness of households, as some literature also indicates, is very important for the successful implementation of right. Uh, in this case, many to target development agencies or village leaders just to transfer the message. Also, a fair and acceptable system of uh, you know, the access and distribution of forest resources for the sustainable management of forests is, 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 is also important. It has to be clear. Evidence also shows that policies that empower communities and uh, that have clear access and extraction rules are also effective. So well, in general, we can say that uh, though we need to you know which aspect of forest management is really very important for the carbon stock, uh, in general, we can say that strong level of local level issues are necessary to improve the forest condition and hence the level of carbon stock. Uh, a number of condition variables are also significant. Forest density, which, which are, uh, is important uh, for the carbon stock, so uh, high population relative to the forest area may reduce the carbon stock, and they need to consider the role of, the role of, the role of population in selecting sites for, for red, for example. Forest area, as also indicated by uh, another paper, uh, uh, Chatter and Agral, is also another important factor in affecting you know, carbon stock and need to increase, need to consider really how to increase the current forest area just by plantation or rehabilitated degraded forests and so on. We, we try to include you know, how far is the household from the, from, from, from the town, but we got a mixed result for different uh, estimations. Agroecological factors need to be considered again here, uh, uh, and uh, things like altitude is also very important. And there is also variation across uh, regions uh, as the coefficient for the demi variables show. So conclusions, uh, I have already stated that strong level, local level initiatives are important to increase carbon stock uh, and improve tree cover by improving tree cover and consequently enhance you know, the total carbon stock. It is necessary to consider the role of population in selecting areas for red implementation. Areas where the forest density is low seems a good candidate for, for, for red. Uh, and it's also important to have a policy that tries to increase forest cover through uh, maybe plantation at a larger scale or just by considering other degraded areas. And the other the role of agricultural factors may be, may be, may be considered, but uh, it really requires further study because we were not serious in classifying the regions into uh, these different agricultural zones. Well, there are still a lot of things to be done in this area, like which, which aspects of forest management may be important for it. And also things like the issue of uh, leakage, maybe that, is, that is when you restrict you know, communities uh, to, to, from, from, from using you know, the resources from the particular forest, then it is possible that uh, those households or communities may go to the other 
the other neighboring forces, and we call that a show of uh, leakage. This thing is how the you know, force management can be used to avoid this kind of leakage. So it's also another important factor. Thank you.